I want to tell you a little bit about Dr. Nambi Narayanan and uh, sorry, let me say that again. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Nambi Narayanan, Nambi sir, like I like to call him, Nambi sir, and how I met him and how this movie happened. After Vikram Veda, uh, somebody told me that there is a story of a good-looking ISRO scientist who had an affair with a Maldivian woman, and because of that affair, he was uh, he sold uh, rocketry secrets of India to Pakistan. He was arrested, tortured, beaten in the jail, and almost killed. But with the help of the CBI, he got out and he was proved innocent. So I thought it's a very good story, a poor man's James Bond story. I thought I could quickly finish this film. So with that very, let me say, shameful but shallow desire, I went to meet Dr. I mean, I went to meet Nambi sir in uh, Trivandrum. But when I met him, when I saw him, I knew immediately that we were missing something. Because he had a tejas, you know, he had a power. He looked like a lion in a cage. His eyes were bright, shiny, but sad and angry at the same time. He met me very politely and he said, Mr. Madhavan, I like your films. You're a good actor. I'm a big fan and everything. But, uh, you know, he's, when he started talking about the case, about all the falseness of the case and how it was such a futile case with no proof. No, uh, brother, just sit down for two minutes. They can't see me. So sorry. Huh? We'll do it. I'll give you promise. I'll give you photos. So, thank you, sir. So, there I, uh, I, I started looking at him and he was talking very angrily. Look at it. How wrong it is. This is not right. How can, they, how can they call me a betrayer of the country? How can they call me a traitor? That was his biggest problem. So, I said, sir, I understand. It's a, but it's a, you know, you've already been vindicated. You've already been proved innocent. You, everybody, this is in 2016 and 17 before the Padma Bhushan, before the compensation was given to him. I told him, court has said you are innocent. What is the problem? He said, what is the problem? He said, you know I am innocent. I know I am innocent. The court knows I am innocent. But go to Google and put my name. See what comes out. And when you go to Google and put Nambi Narayanan, it says Isro spy case fame on Nambi Narayanan. Even now, everybody suspects that there is a possibility that he could have been a spy. He says, what did I do wrong with this country? How can I live with that? Everybody still... And, and he says, if I am innocent, somebody is guilty. Who is guilty? Unless you find who is guilty, I will never be innocent. And so I thought what he said had a lot of, uh, uh, lot of point. So I um, started writing a script for seven months. I went back to him after seven months and I said, uh, sir, this is a script. He was very happy. He said, very good. But only this point, uh, there is a discrepancy, Madhavan, because uh, I was in Princeton. So I said, uh, what do you mean you were in Princeton? He said, I was the first uh, Ivy League scientist from, in uh, first scientist from India to get the Ivy League uh, um, you know, scholarship and go to Princeton. And I studied under Professor Kroko. I started getting really worried because I'm thinking, how is this man saying all this? How does he know Professor Luigi Kroko, who is supposed to be one of the foremost scientists in NASA, who is you know, largely involved with the moon mission, how is Nambi Narayan connected with him? And he told me that he finished the thesis under him in 10, 10, year, 10 months. People take five years, seven years to finish it. Ten months he finished it. Then he told me about his achievements in Princeton, in France, in Scotland, in going to USSR when USSR was USSR and was breaking up, how he got engines out of uh, USSR when uh, you know they were forbidding India from getting the cryogenic engine so that they can participate in the satellite launch market in 1994. A baffling story of, which sounded to me like not just James Bond, but the father is father of James Bond. He's a rock star. I said, is it true? Is it possible? How can an Indian scientist do all these things? But the unfortunate truth is, everything was true. He just didn't think it was important to tell the world about his achievements. He's written two books, and that also this is not mentioned in, in, in detail. I said, what sort of an Indian is this? What sort of a man is he? And I said, sir, when did you plan to tell me? Why did you not tell me? I wrote, like an idiot, I wrote this script for seven months. You never thought you should tell me all this? And he said, what is there to tell? They paid me a salary, I did my duty. That's all. And he also said, by the way, I also made the Vikas engine. I said, by the way, like how we make uh, Pulyodhara at home, you're saying, by the way, we made a Vikas engine? Are you talking about the Vikas engine, which is the, which is the only liquid fuel indigenously built engine that ISRO has, which is the only engine which, without which none of these missions, Mangalyan, Chandrayaan, nothing is possible. The engine which has the reputation of never having failed, world record sort of thing. Is that the engine you're talking about? He said, yes. 
That day I got very moved, very emotional. I realized there are two types of patriots. One, that brazenly go out and fight for the country and give up their lives saying, Bharat Mata ki jai, and you know, they take a bullet for us, they give up their lives for us, and there are many such people, and hats off to their sacrifice, and I will always, as a nation, be indebted to them. There's another type of patriots who put their life on the line every day, whose, whose job and the nature of their job puts them in danger every day, who have barely any family life, who give everything they have to the job, knowing very well that they will never be recognized, never be talked about, no street will be named after them, no bust will be put up at the end of any road, but they still do their job with might and anger and passion. And that is when I decided to make this movie. I really wanted to, it took me one and a half years to write this story. And after one and a half years, I decided to make this movie. I made this movie for two reasons. One is, the, what we did with a genius like Nambi Narayanan should never happen to any Indian ever, not just any Indian. No scientist or patriot around the world should go through what he has gone through, which is unbearable. And we have to know about it. Not knowing Nambi Narayan sir's story, I think, is a national disservice. It's actually unpatriotic because we have to know why, uh, what makes this country what we are today, this functional democracy that we are in today, what makes it like that. Very important for us to know. And the second reason I made is, you know, as a film industry, we only make movies about freedom struggle and our uh, mythology as well as our, uh, uh, you know, Mughal uh, struggle, which is very good and hats off to all those sacrifices. But there's another industry that we are extraordinary at, which is science, technology, space research, and IT. People from Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, uh, uh, all over India, they are ruling the roost in all over the world. When Hollywood makes a movie called Steve Jobs or uh, Interstellar or Apollo 13 or Inception, we believe that, yeah, they are the only ones capable of doing all these rocket work, and we believe that they are the only ones who are capable of saving Earth. But we also have thousands of such art, uh, scientists and technicians and technocrats who are top, you know, uh, CEOs in the Fortune 500 companies today. All of them. I mean, Suntar Pichai, Satya Nadella, uh, you name it. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of these two people. But you name it in every field, from Metaverse to Web 3.0. It's all being developed by Indians ac across the world. They are front runners in these uh, technologies. But we don't make movies about them. So I wanted to pay an homage to all the engineers, especially the ones that have gone from the south all the way to other parts of the world and made us so proud, so that the intellectual capital of our country, which is so important, I think in the years to come, the bigger wars will be fought because of intellectual capital. And I think India is, is the hub of that sort of intelligence. And therefore, I want them to come back. You know, I want them to make India proud where they are from, but I also want them to come back to India and make India proud because I think in the years to come, much sooner than you think, space research and interplanetary travel is going to become a necessity. And India needs to be the forerunner on that. And that is the reason I made this film. I, um, it took me six years. And uh, we have done a lot of things that have been never done in any film before. Like uh, we have shown a rocket engine. You must have seen rockets or spaceships, but you will never see a rocket engine in any film. We've shown a rocket engine. And the beauty of a rocket engine, it looks like a diamond jewelry when you see it when it is off, but when it is on, the power of it is so much that, you know, if you're too close to it, your eardrums will burst. It's the loudest noise known to man. The second reason, the which, second thing that we've done that has been never done in any other film before is all the scientists have gone from 29 to 79 without prosthetics. So no beard and mustache, no false wig, nothing. Everything is real. Uh, it took us a lot of research and a lot of uh, effort to get into that look. The reason I did that is because everything we're saying in the story is true. I don't want the public to think that just because it's a stuck-on beard or a mustache that something about the film is not as genuine as the look. Um, we had our teeth uh, alignment changed so that I could look like Dr. Nambi Narayanan. We put on weight and lost weight um, over a short period of time without affecting our health and still looking younger. So all this research, which we'll eventually relieve, reveal when we do Secrets of Rocketry. But I want you to see a couple of photographs and understand how we looked. Most importantly, Dr. Nambi Narayanan was so good looking that people refused to believe that, Dr. Nambi, uh, that, that uh, Nambi sir did not have an affair with a Maldivian woman. Because if he's this good looking and he's a genius and he speaks so well, he must have had an affair. And uh, I want to show you how good looking he was. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to imagine a very good looking person. He was, I think he was better looking than John F. Kennedy. But you tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'll turn the lights off. And can we just put a, the picture of Dr. Nambi Narayanan in Princeton, New Jersey with his wife? This man not have an affair. The photograph of me while I was in the shoot. Now, 
Let me actually show you my teeth. And during the research, I realized how teeth can make somebody look. That's how I had, had it changed. Thank you. Clearly, how the stomach shakes when you laugh. Please show the picture. So that cannot be a padding in the stomach. And I'm going to show you a picture of me after 14 days. Because we don't have all the time in the world to grow thin and fat, but we had to keep it real. So I will show you how I looked after 14 days. Now this look is without starving, without surgery, without medication, without supreme amount of exercise, nothing. Very calmly, I got into this uh, weight loss. 14 days later, this is how I looked. There you go. If you see the hairstyle, it's the same hair. Go back to the original picture. You see the hairstyle, same haircut. Go to the next picture. There you go. Okay, lights on. Period of many years to get it perfect. And uh, being the trendsetters on that, uh, uh, on, on that front where Bahubali has created history, I'm feeling very proud to be here today to say we did the same amount of hard work, although I wish we had the same amount of budget. But my budget uh, did not allow that much. So we did the same amount of hard work. And uh, I'm very happy and proud to be here today. I'm happy to answer any questions that you will have. Mike, Mike, ma. Uh, is the rocket rocketry is um, put a full stop for the injustice happened to the Nambi Nambi sir? Sir, at least the question that Doctor Nam uh, that uh, Nambi sir is asking, I keep saying doctor, but I, I, that is because you know Nambi Narayan sir has got COVID, and I've been speaking to the doctor the whole day, so I'm saying doctor, doctor, doctor Nambi Narayan is not the right word. He's Nambi Narayan, sir. So, um, Nambi, sir, has asked a question. He says, if I am innocent, then somebody is guilty. We have still not found out who is guilty and punished them. So, unless we find the person who is guilty and the reason he was jailed, there, there cannot be an outcome to, there cannot be a full stop, no? That's all. So, what yeah. were, sir, uh, here, sir, here. Yeah. What were the kind of emotions you've been through in this entire journey of rocketry? And what are the changes you observed inside you as an artist and, a, and as a human being? The first thing that hit me was anger when I heard uh, Nambi sir's answers. The second thing was disbelief. And the third thing that hit me the most was, how can we be as a country like this? How can we not know about our patriots? So that was the one feeling, overwhelming feeling. You know, it used to make, wake me up at night. You know, my wife used to say, you're sleeping more with Nambi sir than with me. Every night you're getting and talking about him. But that became a dream. It became a, a kind of a maniacal uh, mission for us. And so I just did not know how to uh, convert that except to tell the story. The emotions that I've got, been through is everything from ecstasy to agony, you know. This film was not easy to make. This, uh, the challenges were not easy. But I had, a, I had a whole unit that was full of madmen, mad people. They did not look at challenges as challenges. Everything, they said, we will go. I mean, they will stand in front of a huge wave and say, we will still cross it. And thankfully, we crossed it and now we are here for the release. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, Kalyan from India Glitz. Hi. I'm a huge fan of your work, firstly. Thank you, brother. Lovely talking to you. Thank you. And uh, for, it's a very common question I wanted to ask you. Like, you have worked. We can turn on the lights dim so I can see them. Yeah, no. Okay. You have worked on Namina and Sir's uh, biopic, actually. So, if somebody has to work on your biopic in the near future, <laughs> who would it be? Or only you would be acting in that? You're very kind, brother. And thank you for the backhanded compliment. But let's see at the end of my life if uh, there is a, if it's worthy of being made into a biopic. But if it is, then I hope somebody who knows me and what I stand for uh, makes it. Uh, I really don't have anybody uh, in mind right now, honestly. All the very best for this, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Sir, yeah. How much fiction is there? How much uh, uh, facts in its unfiction? In the movie? Uh, so, very good question. How much facts and fiction? So, Dr. Nambi Narayan, again, I'm saying Dr. Nambi Narayan sir's life is, uh, the, is the most cinematic story I have ever heard in my life. It is fully James Bond. You know, unbelievable amount of James Bond. I'm telling you, things, what he has done in Russia and France and, you know, how many scientists do you know who have done these kind of things? Secondly, accused of having an affair with a Maldivian woman, you know, getting to jail, almost killed. It is, I don't need to add any more masala in this film. 
In fact, I have taken out facts to make it believable. There are so many facts that if I had kept in the film, it is impossible to believe that one man has gone through all this and not committed suicide. It's like that. So, where there is the only liberty I have taken is crunched time and mixed uh, a mixed two three characters into one to tell an incident. But apart from that, all the incidences are the same. Hello, sir. Here. Here, here. Left, left. Oh, hello, sir. Hi. Uh, direction jeda ni reason ni sir, where cahaya kena, miru cahaya orang kuna. Sorry, I didn't understand. Eh? Why doing direction? Ah, why, why, why? Ah. So, bro, I didn't want to, brother. I mean, yeah, whenever as an actor somebody said that uh, a, a man is directing, writing, uh, doing the screenplay and the script of a film, I used to laugh out really loud because I know that that film is a flop. There is no way that anybody can do all those four departments. But I didn't have a choice. I couldn't find a writer who understood how a liquid fuel engine will work. I have an engineering background. I have studied, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, all my life I've been a fan of engineering as well as the um, uh, aerospace and what they achieve. And so I know a little bit about the engine. Dr. Nambi, uh, uh, Nambi sir always kept testing me also about whether I have the ability to write about his engine and make a movie. So writing I had to do. Acting I wanted to do because, you know, every actor dreams of doing a film like Nayakan or, uh, you know, where you're growing from a young person to an old person. So I thought this will be my uh, opportunity. I did not realize how difficult it is going to be. The third thing is, I no one want to produce this film because they said, who is the heroine, how many songs, how many fights, there is none of that. But I knew it is a hardcore commercial masala film, but I couldn't convince them. So I decided not to be answerable to anybody and I put my own money in it with my two uh, uh, funders and co-producers who are uh, Dr. Uh, um, Vargis Mulan as well as um, uh, Vijay Mulan, my friends, and 27th Entertainment. They were big fans of uh, Nambi sir as well. So we ended up making the film and we had the trust and faith not to release it on OTT during COVID because we wanted to make sure the story was told in the screen. I did not want to direct it. Somebody else was supposed to direct it. But 25 days before the movie was to start, our film had gotten delayed because of casting, because all the actors spoke Tamil, Hindi and English. So while casting them, one for one film casting itself, it takes so long for them to f speak like an ISRO scientist. But we had to find everybody who spoke all three languages. So it got delayed and our director's uh, schedule got clashed and we couldn't accommodate. So the choice was drop the film or I should direct it. <coughs> Nambi sir believed that I could direct it. So he said that, you know the engine, you know me, you have worked with big directors, so you do it. And uh, uh, the other funder said, we have no problem, we are very happy for you to direct it. So I said, okay, but on the first day, I'm telling you, I was so, so frightened, I was in tatters. It was like I was standing in front of the huge army that Arjuna was standing in front of. I don't know who, where to start, what to do. I've never directed an iPhone film in my life. You know, I don't know what it means to go to an editing room or a, or a music session, but one friend called me and said, Madhavan, you're there on the set. There's no point in feeling frightened. You just take that one shot, no first shot, just take that first shot, then you see what happens. So I knew everybody was watching me, so I took that first shot, and then I had the courage to take my second shot, and like that, the film got done. Um, I was very nervous, the whole office was very nervous to know what, uh, what Nambi sir thought about the film. And um, Nambi sir always has a beautiful charm of answering the question you asked, and then answering the question that he did not ask and answering the question that you're going to ask also. So I knew that he is a genius. He will tell me what I want to know. But after coming, uh, after seeing the movie, he just hugged me and he said, I can't talk right now. I'll talk, I'm going to Trivandrum. I'll talk to you later. I said, sir, please tell me. But he didn't want to tell me anything. He went to Trivandrum, called me at 8 o'clock and he said, Madhavan, I have seen more things than most men will ever see in their lives. I have seen more things than most men even should see in their lives. They should also not see the things that I have seen. And so I thought I have seen everything. Now, after watching this movie, I know that a lot of people are going to get jealous of me <laughs> at my age. And I just wanted to question myself to see if everything I have said is accurate or if there is any fabric fabrication. But he said, everything you have said is true. So he says, thank you for giving me the desire to live long enough to see the outcome of this film and what the public are going to say. I am very excited. That's what he said. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Madhavan. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, I just wanted to understand, so you've showed about the physical attributes that you work so hard about, but there must be some mannerisms, there must be some internalizing that you have to do to bring in that character because it is on his life. 
So that, if you could tell a little bit, and then um, also you worked, uh, you've done a lot of research, but apart from uh, Sir Nambi Sir, who, uh, what else were your sources? Okay, very good. The, uh, this, um, case, this film does not have anything, we have about six, seven minutes in the film only about the case. So I do not have to do, and the whole story is based on the verdicts that the courts have given us. So we have that pivotal factor. We have the fact that uh, Nambi sir told me about the Vikas engine, and the film is about his achievements more than anything else. So I didn't really need other sources except the people who investigated uh, Nambi sir's case. So I, I contacted uh, uh, ex-CBI IG um, uh, PM Nair, uh, and I spoke to his son-in-law, uh, uh, Mr. Arunan, who was one of the directors of the Mars mission. All these people came in to help me with factual stuff that happened during their uh, tenure, and these were the only sources. Getting mentally into Nambi Narayan sir's head was, uh, was just a, the barricade. The first initial barricade was a problem, but then I realized we are a lot alike in terms of how we react to anger and impatience and everything. But before I made the film, I told him one thing very clearly. I said, sir, I am not going to make a film where I'm going to show you like the most honorable man on earth, that you are so holier than thou that you have no drawbacks and no bad qualities, and then as a country we wronged you because that would be foolish. So I want to ask you, did you have an affair with a Maldivian woman? Did you sleep around outside your marriage? I said, I, you know, to ask a 75-year-old man, you really, you must be really stupid to ask him all that. But I asked him because I wanted to see how you will react. And you know, most men will say, please mind your language, Mr. Madhavan, or get out, you know. But Nambi sir said, if you want to know about my bad qualities, I'll tell you, come here. And he sat down and he told me about all the drawbacks and the flaws in his character and the bad qualities that he had and he blew. I'm here because of you. You are the one who changed my life too, with the speeches of you. And I'm very happy to see you here. And uh, coming to the rocketry. Thank you, brother. Thank you. My very name is uh, Radha Krishna. Coming to the rocketry. And we all know how Kalam sir contributed to the country. And this film, after this film, we, we, we may feel sad, cry, and emotional about the Nambi sirs, right? So we can expect next what the country should be doing again to the him. I mean, what he wants to the country, what he, we must return him, right? The love, the loss he has, he has done, he got it, right? So what we can, what we are going to give back to the Naminara and sir with this film, I want to know from you, sir. Now, Nambi sir doesn't want anything, brother. In fact, if you look at his court speeches when he fought his own case, that court case is not there in my film. But when the Supreme Court asked him what he wants, he said, I don't want compensation. Don't give me the money. I don't, I'm not here to earn the money. Three times they asked him. He said, I'm not here to fight for the money. If I am innocent, who is guilty? Let us find that. We should ne Somebody took India back 20 years in terms of rocket science. Who is that? So even now, what Nambi sir wants is, we should not put down our own scientists and we should make sure we treat them as assets, the intellectual assets that they are, be it our scientists, our engineers, our doctors, our surgeons, our IT people. And we have to make sure that we do what is good for India because all the brains in the world are from here. It's not an un overstatement, it's an understatement. My, so, uh, my question is what I want to is, we will contribute. See, Kalam sir is given a lot of things and we, we need to give him back the love, what we have done. That's what I he want. He doesn't want love. He doesn't even want recognition. Yeah. He is just saying, acknowledge and protect the scientists. That's all he's saying. Yeah. That's what he wants and I think we should do it. They're already doing it. We gave him the Padma Bhushan, we gave him the compensation, but we're also giving him the recognition right now. Recently, the case you would have seen, people are being arrested on his case as well. The story continues today as I speak to you. So maybe that's the right step. Sir, I am a big fan to you. I, am, I don't know whether it is right to ask you a picture here. And if possible, can I have a picture to, with you? Yeah, we can work that out, brother. We'll, I'm and sure. uh, yeah. we bought a book for you to give to give to you. And he is my brother. He wants to speak something about you. Give yes. me a minute, if you, want, if you don't mind. Uh, hello, sir. It's a pleasure uh, meeting you. And I've been following you from uh, Garjamai days. And uh, I think you are uh, the first uh, Pan-India star, I believe. And uh, now we have seen many people who are Pan-India, but what is the code that you used at the time so that, uh, just like, you know, uh, at the time so that you became such household name at the time? Because at the time, <coughs> to be frank, the South Indians, they were, uh, there was not much opportunity. So what did you do differently so that you became household name? So before me, Kamal sir has also uh, been a pan-Indian actor. I think Chiranjeevi sir also has done Hindi films and been successful at it. 
I think the advantage I had at that time is I knew to speak Hindi with the right accent because I was born and brought up there. So the acceptance was much faster. Also because I had done Hindi series that, uh, that gave me a jumping uh, board out of which I could get into their uh, attention. Thankfully and God's grace, I also did films that became iconic from Rang De Basanti to Three Idiots. So they, even though when they accepted the film, they also accepted the actor. I was not particular about only playing the main hero, my selection of subjects or whether I did breathe or decoupled, all that became a, a, you know, a, a part of my acceptance as a pan-India actor. But, but more than that, today's world is kudos to the Telugu actors who have done it. You know, Allu Arjun, Prabhas, my friend, uh, uh, Rana Dagupati, every one of them, Mahesh Babu sir, every one of them are actually becoming exemplaries and people around uh, India are look, looking up to them with big fan following in the north. And that, their achievement, I think, is much bigger than mine because they didn't do it in the native language, they did it in their language and still became uh, superheroes for India. So they have, a, they have much bigger an achievement than mine. But thank you very much. Uh, for this, I'm really happy. I hope you join us for tea Hi. and... Uh, uh, yes, sorry. Just one last Last question. one? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Um, I'd like to say that you're as good as an orator as you are an actor. It's always a pleasure to hear you speak. Thank you. So, um, my question to you is, uh, does genius always come with a price? Do you believe that? And another one is that because you've directed this film, you've explored a storyteller side to you. Of course, actors are also storytellers, but as a director, you see the bigger picture. So do you want to explore that side more, or do you look forward to directing more films? Well, first of all, thank you for your compliments. It's <clears throat> very touching. Uh, secondly, yeah, there's a price to pay if, if you're a genius or there's a genius in your family. And I think the price paid for having a genius in your family is far more than being a genius. Because I think when you're a genius, you, have, you share the same uh, uh, qualities of, of a, of a insane person. You don't really care what the rest of the world thinks. And so you're not burdened by it as much as a person or the people living with and around you. The ability to uh, write a story or tell a story, I, I mean, I'm ashamed to say I haven't uh, taken any classes on writing or filmography or direction or acting. It's been very instinctive. But I realized that, uh, you know, my background is such that if the kind of subjects that I select, be it three idiots or breathe or or even decoupled, they, they require a kind of, uh, uh, you know, looking ahead of the curve sort of writing, which I'm not able to come across very easily. So I end up being a screenplay writer of my own products and, uh, and my stories to tell. But I think in the years to come, I mean, I, I don't know why only America should make movies on, uh, you know, consumer, like science fiction that is, becomes rage around the world. You know, we have all that. You have our ancient sciences, our ancient mythologies as well as our modern technology where we're both experts and the culmination of that should give us enough and more stories to write and I hope that writers look in that direction and give us actors the luxury not to having to indulge uh, in our amateur way into writing and rely on their ability to research and tell a story so that we can just completely act and enjoy the process of acting. Um, would you like to direct more films? I'm not qualified to, honestly. This was, a, like I said, an insane project, and we just knew what story we had to tell as a team. But honestly, uh, I, I'm afraid that I will be found out. I'm afraid that everybody will realize what a horrible actor, director I am. So I'm going to stick to acting for the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.